episode number 156. If you find somebody that you're a fan of and you consume their content, you're like, oh man, this person's going to be an awesome match for my show or for a client. If you're genuine and you reach out on a platform that they're active on, chances are you're going to get a favorable response. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Hoff, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Hoff. Folks, I'm pumped up today. It's a little foggy over here, but still, we're going to be bringing you some sizzling and actually at the end of the day, strategic advice from our guest, our featured guest, Rachel Miller. Rachel, are you ready to be real? Super ready. Oh, yeah. So we're going to get into the official bio because Rachel is the senior social strategist at Tholium.co, which they help a lot of different businesses with their strategies and uh, understanding, and I'm sure, also their reports and understanding the audience and their engagement and where their community is at. But she's been also listed as one of the top 50 MarTech as well as influencer marketing and B2B experts uh, in the world, folks. So we're pumped up to have you on the show today. But also, I want to know, uh, Rachel loves craft beer, craft beer and breakfast burritos. So, Rachel, what's your favorite breakfast burrito? Ooh, there's so many good places here in Fresno. Um, hmm. I think my favorite right now would be at Guadalajara Restaurant. I don't know if you've been there. Oh, yeah. The train absolutely. tracks. Yeah, I love that place. So they have... Um, homemade tortillas, like there it's, you go. um, it's pretty baller. Yeah. The, the, the tortillas are the key, right? Yes. Yeah. That's so uh, you got to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wrap it up, especially on a foggy day like this. Um, so we've given our listeners a little insight that you are a social strategist, but tell us a little about more about Thulium and what you guys do for customers. So Thulium, we have a lovely niche in uh, B2B enterprise tech. So we help a lot of um, large companies like the Dells of the world, SAP, IBM. Um, and we really help them with their storytelling, like humanizing their brand um, through a lot of uh, social media campaigns, obviously influencer marketing, which is huge right now. Right. Um, and then the most important part is the analytics, like really tying it together, being able to report effectively to executive leadership. Um, so you can just, you know, really sell it and have the opportunity to create more campaigns. Right. That's why I got into the business nine years ago. My story is I was literally sitting down with a buddy and I was having Starbucks and he said, Hey, people are going to need, you know, Facebook pages managed. And that was the start, you know, and now the biggest thing I really loved about it was with digital is you could track, um, that you can actually track the results. You can actually track the traffic. Um, unlike your tr- traditional broadcasts, you know, at that time, like your television, when I was working it, you know, we couldn't tell you how many people were exactly watching Oprah at that time. Right. Or how many people clicked to your ad, um, where now you can, right. I mean, that's the coolest part about the business. Absolutely. And that's what is so surprising to me all the time that even though we can literally track everything, people just aren't, or right. they're so unsure of what they should be tracking. Yeah, they don't um, see like tracking their analytics on their website, right? Exactly. Yeah, they just feel really good about it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, everything's good. Everything's good. You know, it's like, well, people are bouncing off your first page. Uh, maybe we can try to get them to the second page somehow. Because um, the goal at the end of the day is obviously for, you know, and social is to help drive, you know, drive results. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, now, nine years now down the road, I mean, more and more clients want to see results from what they've built on social, right? Say you built a 500,000 person uh, following on Facebook. Well, it's not the same as it used to be. If you had 500,000 fans, you know, nine years ago, you'd be getting a ton more reach for free. And so now you're going to have to be more strategic with advertising and your content. And then also be happier with less organic reach just because it's still free. You know, you're still reaching someone, right? Even organically. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely, we are shifting more to a pay to play. Um, but I think it's, again, it's tying all your analytics together. Cause again, like you said, you could have 500,000 people on your Facebook page and you can see that they're clicking on your blog post, but then you get to go to Google, go to your site. Are they reading it? Cause I think time on page is a really overlooked metric. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They're not taking action. If they're just bouncing after five seconds, they're not reading that awesome content that you spent time creating. Right. Yeah, you have just the whole library and then they just bounce off your first page. 
Right. And then you're not retargeting them with other stuff. Maybe. Yeah, there's so many lost opportunities. <laughs> I think retargeting is a big one too. I think I really like the retargeting ta- tactic, you know, where you get them somewhere and then you still can follow up with those people that maybe do bounce off because the, obviously people are still busy too, right? I mean, it's not, it's not uncommon to have people just quickly look at your site and bounce. Right. I mean, I'm guilty of that. I have so many tabs open in my browser. So I am yeah. that person. Who, it looks like I'm there forever, <laughs> right. but it's just because I haven't had time to read it or I click right. and like, Oh, I'm going to bookmark that and I'll come back later. Yes. Um, bookmarks or Evernote. A lot, a lot of people time. on the, yeah, a lot of people on the show, like the Evernote, because they can just like kind of capture it and save it in their app. Um, yes, ever to pocket. I'm a big pocket. Oh, person. pocket. Yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, a few guests have said pocket. There's so many good apps out there too. That's the thing I love. Uh, you know, um, so if if someone is you know sitting here saying, okay, what can I do today? What is one of the, one of the you know biggest concerns or questions you're getting from your customers? You know, right now, um, you know, as with maybe the Facebook page. Facebook, I think it's creating original content. I think people are really having a hard time starting. Um, It's they're you know, they're curating their content. They've got their buffer going. It's, you know, their page looks busy, but it's not, they're just sharing somebody else's story. So I think that's the number one hurdle is, you know, coming up with one, the time, the strategy, and if it's going to be people in your business, or you're going to pull in influencers, like how do you really create that compelling vision (laughs) and put it into video or, you know, an audio format, like a podcast, like how are you actually going to translate that to a story people want to hear and see? Right. Yeah. I was listening to an interesting um, interview this morning because I do that when I'm working sometimes to get things prepped and listen to another interview. And it was with Seth Godin. He's talking about his uh, all MBA program, which is basically a it's just a short term kind of push yourself through a whole heck of a lot at the end of the day and you reward yourself by, you're not going to get a piece of paper, but you've pushed yourself beyond your limits. And, but um, you know, it's just so interesting today's new world, you know, uh, people are being forced to, (laughs) it's not like it used to be. There's not legacy jobs out there, you know? And so, you know, one of the biggest things you can do from social media is everyone has the power to create a social media following or a blog or something. And then just, be consistent because his thing was you have to keep doing it. You have to just keep writing every day. You know, he said, yeah, uh, it's, it's amazing. And it's like in social, it's such the equalizer. Like you right. can be, you know, Joe Blow in Fresno, California, and yes. you're, you know, a global phenomenon. You know, it's location is so irrelevant these days. It's just really, you're being consistent with your story and putting it out there. Absolutely. And being, and, and being uh, tactical, you know, I mean, one of the strategies I've used folks to get the podcast going since the beginning, and now we're coming up almost on our three year at in March is um, say I'm watching an interview with someone and then I'm like, Hey, let me just give love on this YouTube video. Right. And then let me go on these people's social and tell them about what the little insights and get and say something specifically that I watched from the show. So it's not like I'm just both, you know, BSing them. And sometimes they reach back, you know, one of the guys, uh, Kai Fu Lee, um, who's, he's a real, he's the Google, he's the president of Google in China. Okay. He's a very smart man. He's a invested into lots of artificial intelligent companies. He has a 1.3 million Twitter following and I'm going to possibly get him on the show this weekend. You know, I'm going to work around his schedule, right? Because he's going to be one of my biggest, you know, guests, but Hey people, you can be tactical with your social and, or what Seth said in the show is that podcast, so what we're doing today, is the future newspaper. Absolutely. We're creating a newspaper here, folks. We're creating the future newspaper. Obviously, the more we create more shows, the more we can deliver daily or weekly, you know, and um, in fact, I'm even thinking about going, well, I'm going to have to go to at some point a two pop, uh, po- podcasts a week you know, uh, because for a while there, there's nice having a batch, but now like the batch has gotten too big. And so I think, Hey, if you can do two times per week, your videos could get viewed more often. Right. I mean, that's the fear is like, Hey, I only want to put out one Rachel, just because, you know, I'm afraid it's not going to get the numbers if I do seven and each one kind of gets kind of like half ass numbers and not really seen by many people. Right. That's the, that's the fear. Yeah, you got to find that happy balance between your time and effort scaling and then what your audience wants. Because maybe two times a week is too much. Like you, but you have to test. I think I'm a huge advocate for just 
you got to test it. If it sticks, if not, you know, no regrets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I literally started the podcast because I wanted to interview people that I was interested in. Jeffrey Hazlitt was one of them because he was the, uh, on celebrity apprentice. He was one of the advisors and he was at the time, the CEO or C I'm sorry, CMO, which is the chief marketing officer of Kodak. Obviously now it's, it's, it's a change company, but he was in, he was in the middle of the change and kind of helping him trans transition to more digital and things like that. And as you've seen now, Polaroid stuff has kind of made a comeback, you know, with people capturing these moments on these little Polaroid device things. Um, but the point is anyone can do a show, right? I mean, the newspapers and the broadcasters have to be worried because anyone can create a new show anyone can create a local news show if you wanted to. I mean, this show has a much uh, broader prospect because we're, we're interviewing people from all over the, mostly the United States, but somewhat the world. Um, and we can do it scalably because it doesn't take a lot of time and effort for both parties, you know? And then at the, at the end of the day, the shows get love, they get uh, views, they get downloaded, and then they keep building. As we get bigger guests, we keep getting more and more, you know, reach with each show. And uh, so that's the key thing, right? Is just being, t uh, you know, consistent about it. Yeah, I think it's really cool that anybody can start. Um, and I love this trend, like with the influence of marketing, there's been a lot of talk. First, it was like the micro and the macro, and now we have the nano influencers. Ooh, um, yes. Which I'm, I'm loving because they're even more so than the micro, their audiences are so dedicated and they truly do jump when the person <laughs> says to. Yeah. Um, so the return on investment is really remarkable. Um, and I'm glad to see that brands are considering them. Are you, um, are you, like the, are you guys reaching out to them on like DM or something like that? How are you guys reaching out to the nano influencer? Yeah, I think kind of like what you said, like if you find somebody that you're a fan of and you consume their content and you're like, oh man, this person's going to be an awesome match for my show or for a client. If you're genuine and you reach out on a platform that they're active on, chances are you're going to get a favorable response right. um, versus that, you know, spammy email that you're sending out to, you know, 30 different people. But if you come across, you drop examples of, why you're a fan, um, what's in it for them, um, right. you know, give to that give to get philosophy. Um, Cause much like you, like I had a show with Brian Fanzo several years ago, a video and Twitter chat um, before they were popular and we got some phenomenal guests and it was just from doing that. You know, right. you're just kind of on the land, you're like, man, I really like this marketing guru. Is he going to respond to me? And they did. Yeah. Um, right. Just from you know, sharing what we liked about them. So right. it's, uh, yeah. And it, it's a long tail strategy. It's a long tail strategy because it takes work, but the podcast or anything you create, um, as you keep doing it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You get better, possibly bigger guests or just the momentum of the show. People are you're now in season three, so they take you more seriously, you know, whatever. And the goal at the end of the day uh, is you just love it though. Right. I mean, because yeah, you can't you have a passion for it for sure. Yeah. You can't stop because I mean, if, if the results aren't there and you don't love it, then stop. Right. I mean, that's, that's what I feel like. Just like you put on your Twitter that owl, owl you need is love with the owl, right? Yes. I heard owls. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, I'm just saying it's, 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 it's the truth is that if you don't love something after doing it many times, just stop doing it and find something else. Yeah. And I truly appreciate the people that are so dedicated. I know back when Periscope launched a few years ago, people were doing their live shows and they'd have two viewers and they do it every day at the right. same time. <laughs> yep. I think you do need to you know, get to a point where you need to audit what you're doing. Okay. So I'm going live at 10 AM every day, but right. no one's tuning in. That's um, so you think you kind of like, you know, maybe I'll try 1 PM today and see if that works, but you've got to love it. Otherwise, you know, it shows too. If, if it becomes a job and a work, um, people are not going to want to engage. Yeah. You got to find a reason. And honestly, the truth is for me, the interview show is so fun because it keeps me on my toes. we got a couple different types of segments. We keep switching it up. A lot of, I've learned so much from our guests because they're so successful and, and from all different thoughts of world and mind and mostly and obviously business, but still, it's just interesting. And, uh, and some of them don't even know that much about social media. The show's kind of evolved because I've, I've been able to you know, get guests that I just never thought I would be able to get, folks. And you can do it. That's the thing. It's not people want to be on these things. That's the truth. They're being told by their PR agents and everybody and how our shows even grow more is agents, PR agents and stuff kind of reaching out and saying, Hey, can I book guests on your show if they're interesting and you think you're good? And, um, at the end of the day, like I said, then they're working for you. How do you think Jimmy Fallon gets all his guests? Do you think he's knocking on the doors of all these people? Right. I mean, he's not right. I mean, he's like, he's had someone reaching out to him saying, Hey, 
I want to be on the Jimmy Fallon show. I got, I got this book. I got this piece of content. A video or uh, the big one is movies, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's when you know you're, you've made it when people are knocking on your door versus you knocking on theirs. Um, In a smaller way. That's when you feel somewhat more validated too. Just like if you have a customer that has success and then you get another customer and you have success, right? Like I, I, you start building the company like you have, you know, where you have lots of customers with success. Um, but then I think you also, you need to start being, you know, selective. You can't uh, yes. have everybody still need to stay true to your core mission. And I think I people, when they do get that taste of success, forget that. And they start having everybody and that dilutes your message. Like right. um, you start having gardeners on your show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always, <laughs> I've always, I, the funny thing is I booked a few guests that I didn't really necessarily think fit. And then I learned a lot from them. I was like, yeah. man, that's interesting. Like, I'm glad I brought you on the show. Like I really like look back at the show notes after every year and I kind of just like taking the notes. Cause every guest I take my own personal notes, not necessarily the show notes, but, um, my own notes, you know, just stuff that stuck out to me and just read the things that I said. And, um, I'm always intrigued by that. Like, it's like the conversations sometimes that you didn't really want to have, but like, they were like really impactful. And you're like, oh, that stuck with me. Did you ever listen um, to Dak Shepard's podcast, The Armchair Expert? No, I haven't, but I've kind of heard that he's uh, doing his thing out there. Yeah, I think he has. Armchair Expert. Yeah, what you're talking about, like, because he interviews primarily people in show business. So there's a lot of actors and musicians and you kind of think, you know, you're just going to hear like the same old, same old. But every time I'm always surprised by the insights that I take away um, a lot about just, you know, life and business. And um, it's really compelling the way he's able to craft the conversations. So I got to get him on the show somehow. Absolutely. <laughs> somehow. I'll say, Rachel told me to. I got to hit you up. We told You'll be like, for sure. <laughs> because I've heard about it. But then obviously there's so much content that. It- I can't, you can't listen to every podcast. Let's just be real folks. No, there's, there's no so way. There's no way. Just like Netflix. I, I mean, I don't even watch Netflix. I don't honestly, I'm being truthful. I just don't have the time. So if I get into Netflix, I watch a comedy, like a, like a funny uh, stand up comedy, you know, cause I have a guest pastor, my sister, but Hey, other than that, I'm trying to watch the shows my life while my wife likes to watch. And if not, I, I like to watch a little sports on the weekends, but that's it. You know, I try not to, to spend too much time, in front of the TV and more time, you know, doing my own content and creating things and, and, you know, doing my business and just staying productive and, and, and reaching out to the world. And, you know, uh, I think that I find, I find that for me more filling, fulfilling than like being stuck behind the TV all day, you know, not that it's not bad. I love TV, but I'm just saying we could all take a little, a little walk more often. Right. Yeah. And I think kind of along the lines of what you're saying about having random guests that you have the biggest takeaways from, I think that's the same with your content. Um, particularly when you're consuming it. Like I get the most inspiration from watching, you know, cooking and fitness people on Instagram where they tell their stories and then I can relate that, you know, to enterprise tech. (laughs) I'm like, man, I saw this guy do this and we're going to try it. (laughs) Um, But if you stay in your bubble, if I only watch, you know, other marketers, um, especially people in enterprise, we're all doing the same stuff. You're not innovating. Yeah. One of our uh, recent guests, she said, and she's in a very like regulated business because she's a commercial lender that loans basically businesses 400000 to like several million dollars as a loan, you know, for usually five to 10 years. Um, she said, what I do once a year is I go in and look at all marketing, like all successful marketing campaigns in all different industries of automotive and food and, and try to figure out how I can kind of ca- capture our message in a similar way, which is really interesting. Like you're saying, it's, it's Sometimes you really need to think about what someone in a whole different category, like what's Taco Bell doing to sell tacos? You know, like what is, you know, AT&T doing to, set, to get you into their store to get more, uh, you know, carrier lines, you know, going, right? So, yes. And actually speaking of fast food, I don't know if you just came on your radar yet, but McDonald's is doing a really great campaign with geofencing. Oh, okay. Um, or no, it's, it's Burger King. Burger King's doing it with McDonald's. So if you're in near a McDonald's, and you go into the Burger King app, you get a burger for a dollar. Oh, wow. <laughs> you have to be near a McDonald's. So they're totally playing with like. That's like, interesting. Oh. So like, Man, that's going to be fun for an event. And we can do a Snapchat geofence. And if you're like standing by a competitor and you snap right. the photo, and you come back to our booth. And um, there's so many ways you could spin that. But just, yeah, taking inspiration from that other industries. Cool. Um, so fun. It's so interesting. There's so many people doing different things. And. 
you know, anything it's life is a fun uh, life. If it, if it's like, you're learning new things, you know, and like, especially in this business, I've always learned tomorrow could be completely different. The platforms might change. The reach might change. The advertising way it's done might change. Your advertising clients might change, you know, opportunities, you know, might change. I mean, you're doing something completely different, you know, for your customers within the same industry. I mean, that's the truth. Um, as Instagram didn't exist five years ago. Exactly. And that's, I think, part of the fun, too. And I yeah. think if you, every change, if you look at it as an opportunity, um, there's so much that you can do. I know a lot of people start to freak out with, like, you know, when organic reach dropped. I'm like, man, that's just an opportunity to kind of up your game. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. So just, you know, and be more strategic with your paid, right? Be more uh, strategic with what you're doing on paid. Absolutely. Because I think a lot of people, you know, they're just throwing money at it, but there's no real strategy behind it. And they're like, well, we're getting some returns. I'm like, yeah, but if you did this, you'd be getting that. <laughs> right. So I think it's, a, it's, yeah, so many opportunities. Well, think about all the magazines that like they cost, like the average magazine uh, ad nationally would cost like 250, 250 K folks. So like in a big magazine, you know, and the, the rates maybe have come down a little bit, but not too much. Um, I mean, think about 250 K with a client. That's a lot of play in a month, in a month. I mean, what you could do, you know, it depends on where they want to reach, but I mean, it's a good budget, you know, and, and that's just one publication, you know, brands were spending millions of dollars in these different broadcasts or, you know, untargeted media, if you want to call it. And now the world has changed. You just explained it. Burger King is advertising an, a deal or a coupon only when you're near a McDonald's. I mean, that is strategic folks. Yes. It's, Unbelievable. Um, I love it. Yeah, and just the way the platforms are evolving, you can be so hyper focused, like on LinkedIn. And, you know, you can find, you know, a guy with this job title. Yes. And just go for like color blue. <laughs> and he sees your ad, um, and then he clicks it because you're talking his language. Like you're like, yeah, I want that. Um, it's awesome what we're able to do. That's amazing. Well, now we're about to take you into our top ten. Okay, Rachel, are you ready? Game on. Apple or Android? Apple. Absolutely. Netflix. Apple. Yeah. Apple all day, Netflix or YouTube? Ooh, tough call. Um, I'm going to go with Netflix, even though I really enjoy YouTube. It's my go-to. Like, um, Actually, I was listening to one of your podcasts earlier about Amazon search. Um, I go to YouTube if I need to do something, like oh, whether it's yes. cooking or something on my car or you know, I drop my phone. <laughs> yes. What do I do? I go to YouTube and someone's already done it. <laughs> It's so awesome. It's like, it's like literally if you do, I'm going to teach my daughter cause I have a daughter coming in February. I'm going to be like, whatever you want to fix or find or do or whatever, just, we need to type it in Google and then it goes to YouTube videos and start learning, you know, and because you can do it as a dad, I'll be learning these things that, you know, for my daughter. Uh, yeah. Anything play guitar, make slime, anything. <laughs> yeah. I was like browsing this morning cause we have a cat and I was like, okay, I need to think about this because someone mentioned it, a cat and a baby and just some of the things to point out to make sure that they like kind of get custom to each other. And so I found a YouTube video this morning, basically um, a, an article that said, you know, cats need to hear the sound of a whining baby because it's like a new sound in the house. Like they don't hear that normally. You don't whine for, you know, five to 10 minutes straight or 30 minutes, you know, and so I found a YouTube video. Now we're talking about it. And I like started playing it for my cat and me. We were like listening to it. Like what it sounds like for a whiny baby to just be whining and whining and whining, you know, for 15 minutes. Uh, so it's useful. That's the thing I like about YouTube is it should be YouTube equals useful. So useful. So actionable. Yeah. So useful. And uh, so Instagram or Twitter? Ooh, man, these are hard questions. I am a diehard Twitter fan. I've Twitter. seen day one. I've, um, but my new love is Instagram. Yeah, um, and a lot of clients' new love is Instagram too. So that's good. It's good for both of us. Uh, chicken, steak, or fish? Ooh, chicken. Chicken. Okay. Laptop or an iPhone? Oh, man. Um, I'm glued to both, but I'll go with the iPhone. Yeah, yeah, iPhone. Spotify or Pandora? Spotify. Nice. Okay. Movies or video games? Movies. Reading books or listening to books? Ooh, I don't listen to books, but I do a lot of podcasts. So I'm going to throw that into the Oh, ah, there you go. So yeah, absolutely. So you, uh, and stocks, crypto or real estate? Mm. If I had the money, it would be all about real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Big money though in real estate. Always. So, 
a little one, a fun way I got started getting involved just in a small way because I was looking at different properties and land and listings and stuff. And it's, you have to have big money to do it, right? Let's just be real. Um, so I looked through this thing called Fundrise, which is basically where you become kind of like the lender and you're helping them kind of go acquire properties and then renovate them or sell them or rent them. And then they pay you out basically like, you know, what you really wanted is just like a commission or, or a dividend. Um, and then your money can kind of grow as the properties grow. So interesting way of small amount, you know, investing in a small way. Is that like a Kickstarter for real estate? No, it's actually a separate company. It's similar to like, have you heard of like Lending Club or Prosper where you do peer-to-peer lending? Um, yes. Yeah, it's similar to that, but basically there's a company, Fundrise, that basically collects the money and then you're, you're kind of investing into mini um, REITs, which are REIT, which is like a real estate investment trust. So it's, an, it's, it's a small way of kind of getting involved in um, becoming the lender, right? I mean, and just like, say you had like a hundred bucks a month and you just wanted to keep putting it in, like next thing you know, you'd have like 1200 bucks. Next thing you know, you'd have 2,400 and then you get paid out too. You know, you get paid out commission or uh, dividends uh, as they are making money and things like that. And then also the, it can appreciate with interest. You're, you're also gaining interest. Um, so it's like people are paying you back in a way. And then also you're gaining interest similar oh, to like prosper cool. or yeah, it's a different way of getting involved. And, and I feel a little more safe cause it's legit. I mean, I feel like it's pretty legit. Um, I wouldn't put all your money in there folks, but just like, you know, you could put, you could put $50,000 and get a land deal, but like you might not get paid over time. You know, it's going to take a long time. And then obviously right now the real estate market, it's pretty high and the market might come back down, you know? And so you don't want to be, you know, moving at the wrong time. The people that always make money in real estate buy at the right time and they sell at the right time. I mean, that's just the bottom line or they're, uh, like one of our, uh, uh, and our next guest is going to be into it, but, um, it's, it's where you have, basically you have multifamily units where you're making money every month. You know, that's the key, right? Yes. That residual income. <laughs> yeah. Residual income. You're just making, you know, money every month. Uh, some of these people like my, my guest, uh, Matt Skinner from empire West, they're just, they figured it out. You know, they got investors, they do the deal. And then basically they find people that have properties that are, 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 you know, they're under some distress for some reason and they get a value and then they turn the properties by investing in them and making them better and, 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 uh, you know, raising rents. So last question here, oceans or lakes? Oceans. Nice. When you wake up in the morning, Rachel, why do you love being you? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> um, I like being me. I like because I, I help people all day. Um, yeah, and I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. So um, whether it's a client or a friend, um, you know, helping people to you know be their best self um, is definitely a passion of mine. So that's awesome. Okay, that. we need more of that too. We need more more love. Love your neighbors, yes, love your friends, you love your enemy, everything. It's like there's too, many, there's too many businesses out there to help. There's too many people to help. Why are we competing? Or why are we, you know, it's like, come on, man. Like, too many yeah, people. That's a big mission of mine, too, like collaborative industries. Yeah. Um, sometimes companies forget that, you know, you're selling that same product, so you got to make people want it. So. Oh, yeah. People <laughs> are. Yeah. Variety, so everybody wins. Absolutely. <laughs> There's no doubt. Everybody wins. I've had so many guests that are on the show that do exactly what I do, but they do it in the Bay Area. They do it in this city. They do it in Seattle. No one can win all these customers. It's just not a reality. And no one, yeah. not everyone does, this. Not everyone does the same thing either, right? I mean, not everyone does the same exact thing. Not everyone does it the same way. So, you know, the biggest thing, like you said, is just collaborate. I think that's the hugest thing in all business lines. Don't look at your competitor. If you're a gardener, don't look at your competitive gardener. Try to figure out, hey, how can we work together to get more deals? Maybe there's bigger properties that we can't do on our own, but we can partner up and get a bigger deal. Exactly. Or they specialize in large trees and you do, you know, right. flowers. You know, Just there's cross-selling. So exactly. Yeah. Again, yeah. Collaboration is uh, really the key to success. And the same on social too. That's what basically influencer marketing is, folks, is you have to collaborate. So don't pay money to people that you don't think really love your brand or would love your brand. That's my opinion on it. Uh, let's say this, folks. What is the skill you want to master right now? Is there something you're on your docket? You're like, I'm going to master it this year or it's on my docket for next year, this next come up, coming up on the new year? So my new year is actually, it was kind of the same as this year, but I've been so busy. 
Um, I've been kind of the, the girl behind the scenes, helping other people tell their stories for a few years now, and I'm really looking to get back onto the content wagon myself. So content I've been wagon. rushing out on all kinds of things. I've been going through the SEM Rush Academy to brush up on my SEO for blogging. Um, I've been doing a lot of practice video, um, how to edit video a little bit. I think that's a skill um, we all need to know now. <laughs> it's just the state of the world. Yes. Um, a little bit of audio, reading some books, um, just to kind of really up my game so I can uh, hit 2019 hard. And do you have a favorite app or tool that you like using on a daily basis? Hmm, let's see. Um, probably like content curation. We talked about Pocket earlier, Love Buffer, Agora Pulse, anything that kind of keeps those the content coming to me. I don't like searching for it, so if it gets the RSS feed coming right. to me, um, it really helps me streamline my outbound. And you can change, you know, switch it up real quick and then send it out. Yes, because like he said, we don't have time to consume everything. Um, yeah. If you have those trusted sources, um, it really speeds things up. Absolutely. Especially with scheduling content out too. Uh, so be real. Today for lunch. If you could sit down with anyone in the world today for lunch, who would it be? I'm going to go... With Lady Gaga. Oh, um, I love Lady Gaga. Yeah, I think along that be yourself and, you know, let your freak flag fly. <laughs> yeah, there you I, go. I, I love her for, you know, really sticking to who she is and um, just being a massive success. And unbelievable talent. I mean, man, she is unbelievable. Yeah, I know. I haven't seen her in a movie yet, but that's like maybe this weekend. I need to get out there. Um, she's, she's, I've heard it's amazing. She's incredible. She's incredible. That would be one of my dream guests right there, Lady Gaga. A B-real conversation, an intimate conversation with Lady Gaga. Yeah, for real. That would be so cool. I'd be interested like to her songwriting. Hours. How does she write songs? You know, because she has a she's just knows how to write great songs. Uh, yeah, her lyrics are amazing. Kind of like um it reminds me of like Amy Winehouse too. You had that Ooh, same. Like yes. um, yep. Yeah. And Amy Winehouse. Her, but in her documentary is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, they're making a lot of documentaries on Netflix, huh? They are. It's a good space, though. Um, I think the whole documentary format has evolved. Um, yeah, they're more, so stuffy. They're more, yeah, they're more like almost a movie telling in a way, and they kind of go. Uh, yeah, the way they're edited. Um, yes. Yeah, sure. Netflix is really good at editing. Whoever's yeah, in charge of Netflix amazing. editing is amazing. And their series are so cinematic. It seems like you're watching a movie with each hour episode. It's I really know. Incredible. I'm always shocked by that. I'm always shocked by like the, every, like no matter what challenge, whatever you kind of watch on there. Like I've obviously sat there and just try to find stuff to watch. And I'm like, dang, this is like, feels like a movie. Is this just a regular show? It's just like, whatever they're doing it is, uh, that's why obviously all the, all the movie companies have to be worried. And everything now I see on TV is like Netflix advertising their own shows. So it's like, man, maybe they're, they're going to be like the main advertiser on TV pretty soon. They'd be like, everything's, you know, they're, they're advertising instead of having to go to the movie theater. It's just right to Netflix. Exactly. They are, they're doing that. They have, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, I was watching the other night and they had Dolly Parton and, and Netflix is doing a series with her. They're turning a lot of her popular songs into movies. Wow. Um, and yeah, straight to Netflix. Like, yeah, so. they just skip the, skip the, skip the line. Exactly. It makes, it deeper. it makes it obviously people can consume the content because they will, but it's just like when you're paying 20 bucks a movie, it really needs to be like amazing. Yeah. Going to the theater is so expensive right now. I have a daughter and she loves the movies um, and I love taking her, but man, it's like 40 bucks. You go in there, yeah. you got your tickets, you got, you know, your popcorn, your drink, right. <laughs> overpriced candy. Um, you could get a steak dinner. Yeah, exactly. The one thing that's nice is they're making it a little more comfortable with the seats are some, and some of those theaters are a little more comfortable. They, they, are, they maybe recline or, you know, they're a little nicer. Uh, like they have to couch. compete with your couch, you know, and then <laughs> they have to compete with like, is my, is it going to, is it going to recline? Is it, you know? Uh, so last couple questions here. Is there a book that has changed your life or changed your mindset? Hmm. Um, well, actually it's been a few years, but I really like Chris Brogan. Um, and one of his first books, The Freaks Shall Inherit the Earth, um, is a good read for anyone kind of anywhere, really. It's, it's just about, you know, staying true to yourself, um, being an entrepreneur, going after your passion. Um, it's an easy read. I would highly recommend that one. Chris Brogan. Absolutely. Chris Brogan. Yeah. Uh, and also, 
can you share with us, do you have a favorite show or something like to do at night? So my guilty pleasure, I kind of have a thing for like any kind of military or first responder type show. So I DVR pretty much all of them, like NCIS, oh, okay. One, you know, yes. Chicago Fire. <laughs> so that's kind of the way I unwind. I watch this. That's cool. Yeah, I think we all kind of like always wanted it, maybe wanted to be like the superhero. Like I say, I, myself, I always want to maybe be a firefighter, but to like to do what a firefighter does, like you have to be like, those guys are amazing. They're On a daily killer. basis, they're <laughs> running into like a burning building or helping someone in an accident. I mean, it's just like, they're usually the first responders on a lot of this stuff. And man, unbelievable. Yeah, I know. I have uh, so much love for the firefighters, particularly here in California. We've had a, yes. you know, a horrible year. Um, so yeah, thank goodness for firefighters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show today, Rachel. Um, can I see you having much more and more success with yourself, girl? You're doing amazing things for your customers. You love what you're doing. Uh, you know, if you could give our listeners one last real talk thought, what would it be? I'm going to stick with be yourself. I think it's, uh, everyone needs to really, you know, find their inner passion, chase after it. And like we've been talking on the show, like be consistent because you'll get it. Um, and then people will start coming to you. So I think, uh, be yourself and rock it. Ooh, I love it. Folks, you've been hanging out with Rachel Miller and Travis Tutal and Huff. I want to thank you again for your time today and let's keep being real what another epic episode and uh, if you enjoyed the episode today can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast the be real show on itunes or your favorite podcast platform and also take a little time today if you don't mind and give your boy t huff a review i would really super appreciate it and thank you so much for listening today